And welcome back to the Complete Idiot's Guide to Stationers with 54 Bear, otherwise known as the Complete Idiot. All right, uh, today we're going to go through do a, a quick basic start on the moon. But before doing that, I wanted to go through some of the settings. Um, on gameplay, I normally, I've, I've got my HUD set to uh, 60%. That sort of works for me. Uh, sometimes you might want to up it or uh, increase or decrease it depending on your user preference. Uh, you can also specify how long you want the day to be. Um, there's really no point in sliding it all the way to the left. The, the sun whizzes across the sky so fast you'll probably end up going into uh, some kind of epileptic fit. You can also turn on your auto saves and set the uh, duration between them. Um, some people like to play with the first person helmet. I don't because it has some kind of visor scratch uh, type effect which I don't actually like so I turned it off you turned it on if you wish uh, video I've got it set to you know do normal uh, you can adjust your field of view that's like how wide a view you have I have mine set all the way to the left because I've, I've got a, an ultra wide monitor um, other settings I've got Pretty much maxed out the game is not very cpu intensive at least i found uh, on my system it uh, runs a treat at full blast uh, you can set your audio things you can also turn on and off certain uh, audio warnings if you find some things are a little bit too uh, annoying i turn them off like every time i open and close the helmet or turn the jet back on or the light on or off uh, i've turned those off uh, you can have them on if you wish. Uh, the controls, as I kind of mentioned briefly uh, on the previous one, you can set them pretty much however you want. Uh, review these. I've got a few uh, regular type commands set to uh, button presses on the mouse because I find it easier. Uh, multiplayer, I'm not going to cover that at all. All right, so we'll start with a new world. When you start a new world, over here on the right hand side, it will show you uh, basics of what happens and you know, useful information like how often the, uh, or you know, where the, the sun goes. The moon, when you started on the moon, it used to uh, go directly overhead at 90 degrees. Now they've kind of offset it by two degrees. When you're on like Europa, you'll notice that the sun angle is now 53 degrees. When you're on Vulcan, it's 41. Um, it'll also show you what the uh, temperature range is, and pressure range. You'll notice Vulcan, it gets in very, very hot. 620 degrees Celsius, that's, uh, that'll burn your face off pretty, pretty quickly. Venus is not quite as hot, but it has intense pressure. Nowhere near what the real Venus has but uh, very significant and it's a major problem to deal with. The, um, the hot worlds, Vulcan and Venus, these are end game worlds when you're a little bit more comfortable with the basic concepts of heating, cooling and managing systems. Mimus is very cold. Uh, well, it's not cold, it's just a long way from the sun so it gets very little um, energy from the sun. And you'll you'll see this here, and the you know Sol provides 13 to 17 watts per square meter, whereas when you're on the moon, it's 1300 to 1400. So it gives you an idea of how little you can rely on solar power when you're on Minmus. You really need to find other methods of getting power. And again, because there's no atmosphere, you can't use wind turbines as you would be able to on Europa or Mars, both of which have atmospheres. But they're pretty low pressure. Europa, well, actually, Europa's uh, not too bad pressure-wise, but the temperature is in, is very, very cold. The main challenge with Europa is getting your batteries to last any length of time. Uh, Mars is overall probably the easiest world. Uh, the sun goes over near enough straight overhead that you don't have to really worry about two-axis solar tracking. Um, you do have a starting atmosphere. It's not very high pressure, but it has CO2. So you have a ready source of 
uh, CO2 that can be at room temperature if you harvest it during the day. Uh, very useful for getting your plant started. Although any of the worlds with uh, atmospheres do have stalks. That's something you don't have to worry about on the moon or Mimas or uh, the asteroid belt. I won't really go into the asteroid belt because it's uh, it's it was the first mode of the game. It's there really for legacy purposes. Hardly anyone plays it. It's uh, a little bit too weird for me. OK, so we're going to start on the moon. Again, we're going to go on normal difficulty level. Start the game, overwrite the previous save because I don't want to keep it. And we'll see what kind of starting world we end up with. takes a few moments for it to generate the terrain and stuff. This is usually more on the the first uh, iteration and go through, or you know, when you start the world. When you load up an existing save, it doesn't have to generate the terrain, it just has to read it off a file and it goes much faster. Personally, I wish they had terrain that looked kind of like these uh, loading images that we have here. I did put in a suggestion to the devs a while ago that they could think about making a DLC that had some nice maps, but never got a response to that. OK, here we are on the moon. Everything's looking good. Uh, thing with the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, if you remember. Oh, I, I did make a mistake in the first one. I, I said uh, I was holding down the mouse button while mousing. That's not actually true. I was holding down the Alt button. Holding Alt gives you a mouse on the screen and you can move around and click on various things that you that you wish. So you'll notice the sun has gone away. That's because it is now transiting behind planet Earth. So planet Earth is somewhere up there. But anyway, so sun will rise roughly in that direction and set roughly in that direction. And this is your lander has all the basics of survival that you need to get started. What I normally do is preset a few things. So I'll open up my suit and move that up here. That's so I can keep an eye on the air supply, the waste tank and the battery. Filters as well, but the filters last quite a while. I'll also open up the backpack so I've got access to the inventory. I normally swap the belts out right at the beginning. Put this tool belt over there. And then I can click on this. You remember the four squares means it has a clickable uh, inventory. Click on that, drag it over here. So now I've got permanent access to all my tool belt, even though I'm not wearing any of it. Um, I'm going to go through the tablet and how you use them as we go through the game, but not right now. So I'll open up the, one of the starting crates. This one has the very basics that you need to get going. And I'm just going to Bun drop a bunch of things in. But before I even do that, I'll open up my uh, uniform. I'm going to put in the medical pill and I'm going to put in the duct tape. That's because those two things are the one thing, the things that you may need in an absolute hurry. So close that off. Now, to get started, I'll put the tracker cartridge inside the uh, handheld tablet. And we'll start by loading up some stuff. We want the iron frames. We want the iron sheets. And you'll notice as I'm dropping them in, uh, if there's anything in the slot here, it just gets transferred here. I want the power stuff. Uh, I want the arc furnace. Solid generator I'll leave for the moment. I want the auto lathe. I want the solar panel. And I'm going to want some glass sheets. And I will put this in there. What else have I got? Uh, yeah, I'll grab the plastic sheets as well. Don't actually need them right now. So first choice, whereabouts are you going to put your base? So I'll start off with the iron frames in the left hand. Now to place stuff, you have it in an active hand. Your active hand is indicated by the yellow bars above. You can swap the active hand by pressing the E key. So if I try and do anything with my right hand being active, I've got nothing in it, it won't do anything. Switch to my left hand, press the right mouse button. Now you're in place mode. These are the basic 
starting blocks, I guess you can call them. Now, I'm not going to build up too high because I don't want to uh, be using the jetpack too much. So I should just start here. I'll put them down in... Actually, let's do uh, a 5x5. Five five. Give ourselves a bit of room. So 3, 4, 5... And this down here, this is uh, silicon. I may need, I will need silicon at some point, but uh, not right now. Incidentally, I do have um, a couple of mods loaded. One is Infinite Paint, mods you can get and install quite easily from the uh, from the workshop. Um, Infinite Paint means your paint cans never run out. And I have a minor boost so that I don't have to spend quite so much time when doing tutorials on mining. So every time I mine a lump of stuff, it gives me 50. It's a little cheaty, but when you've played the game enough, you do get a little bit fed up with the constant mining that uh, you have to do. So all I'm doing here is I'm putting a single, doing a single weld on each platform or e each uh, frame to create the platform. When the platform looks like this, you can walk on it, nothing will drop through it, but it is not airtight. So, we will have to make some of the floor airtight in order to create uh, a room above it. And you'll note, you may notice in the bottom right hand side, the temperature can go up to like 2000 degrees and it can think, oh my god, I, I'm burning. But you're not really because there's virtually no gas. It's only detecting the uh, hot gas coming out of the welder and there is, it immediately dissipates so it can't really do anything. If you were doing this in, uh, oh, missed one. If you're doing this in an atmosphere that had uh, any pressure, like on uh, Europa, the temperature might increase a little, but because there is so much gas around you, that uh, heat is actually diluted a lot, so you don't notice it quite so much. Anyway, so that's the basic of that done. Now, one of the first things I'm going to want to do is get my power situation sorted. So, the sun is almost set. So I have to decide where do I want to put my solar panel. So let's put my solar panel down. Too late to harvest anything today, but to get the basics set up. I'm going to think, OK, I will probably, I'll just put it down, not in the corner. I'm going to put it here. Again, with it in the active hand, right click. If you press the scroll button or uh, move the scroll wheel on your mouse, it will change to an angled version. That's the only two options you have for this. And you can use the C key to rotate the option you want it. You can also mount it on a side. I mean, having the solar panel there would be absolutely useless, but I could rotate it around if I wanted to. Uh, it's really not worth it. I've not done a study to see, you know, to min max to see whether when you're dealing with multiple panels if you want some angled and some flat or all flat or whatever to see how it works uh, but when you're starting having a single one flat I is more than enough now I'm, gonna, I'm pressing the C button and as I do so you'll see that the power output you can see that as the little oops, uh, icon with a bunch of cubes that is the stationer's way of saying that's power output uh, it also means data, but more on that later. So I should just press that down to complete it. It needs a glass sheet. If you're ever uncertain what it needs uh, to, to finish something, just put a tool in your hand, point it at the item, and the pop-up will show you that I need one glass sheet required to continue construction. You don't actually need a tool to put the gra glass in. You just point at it and click. And there we have one working solar panel. So I'm going to put the solid generator here 
and I know that I'm going to want the output round the back there. So um, now I'll take my APCs. These are uh, very useful early game. They contain uh, the batteries that you're going, well, they hold batteries which can be used to power the, uh, the tools and equipment and they're one of the fastest ways of charging up a battery. So you'll notice on the left hand side you've got the, uh, the lightning icon and an arrow pointing in, that's the power supply com coming into it. Then you have the arrow key pointing to the right to show that the power is going out. So it shows the direction. Very important to get that the right way around. I'm going to place both of those down side by side. Once they're down, you can open them up with a crowbar. Kind of silly that you need a crowbar to do that, but that's just the way the game is. Now you start off with some cabling in your uh, tool belt. So I'm going to wire both of these up. And when you're, when you're doing wiring, you can actually place it uh, without any tools in your hand. Again, the C key will rotate around. You can also use the, uh, the six keys above the arrow keys. That's insert, delete, home, end, page up and down. They will also rotate them in specific directions. But C is an automatic rotate and it kind of gets things right. So I put a straight cable there, move to the right. I want to put a curved piece in, just use the scroll wheel, it goes to a curve, press the C key, it automatically aligns. This one I'm going to want to have, you know, I'll show you uh, one another way of doing it. I'll just put a C key here, or a curve section here, curve section here, and now I want to join these together. So select the straight piece, put it on. It tells me I can't because I need to have the wire cutters in the other hand. Very useful. So with the wire cutters in the hand, now when I go to place a straight, I can do so. In fact, I'm also going to want to have one in that direction. Okay, so that will get the power from the sun and it will put it into these boxes. I don't have anything to store them, not having anything uh, to do with them yet either. So I'll get my arc furnace. That's one of the first pieces of equipment we'll want. And again, when you place this down, you'll see that there are big arrows halfway up showing the direction. So the yaw would go in at the moment <coughs> from the right and out on the left. I want it to go the other way. So press the C key a couple of times and you'll notice the power input is on the bottom left. And on the bottom right, you'll see there is that the three cube icon that is for data connections. So I'll just put it there for now. And the arc furnace is one of the pieces of equipment that you don't actually have to build up when you put it down. It you just plunk it down. It's already there. So I'm going to wire this in. Put a straight piece and a curved piece. Straight piece there, curved piece there, and I'll just have it connected to one for the moment. So now if I turn this on, it won't do anything because there's no battery in there. But if the sun was up and it was generating enough, then the, the arc furnace would actually work. Let's get the auto lathe next. Sometimes what I do is I'll put the auto lathe right up against the arc furnace like that so that when the arc furnace spits the ores out, it goes straight into the uh, auto lathe. I'm not going to do that at this point though. So let's dismantle that and we'll just move it a bit along. Like that. And now this is just an empty thing if I point at it. If you're holding the tool that will dismantle it, the only option it tells you is it's going to deconstruct. If you're not certain what it, what it needs next, just put another tool in your hand, look at it, and it will tell you again on the pop-out. Welding torch and two iron sheets required to continue. So switch to the welding torch. You require iron sheets in your left hand to complete the task. 
that now. Iron sheets. Still won't do anything because I haven't turned the welder on. Turn the welder on, press the left mouse button, we're done. Now it tells me I need four cable coil. So I'll put the cable coil in this hand, switch hands, left mouse button to put them in. Now I need plastic sheets in the left hand to do the next thing. So swap those over again, welder on, weld it up, turn the welder off. Always remember to turn the welder off because the gas welder will continue to burn through its fuel while it's turned on. You do not want to run out of fuel before you've had a chance to build things properly. And the final stage is you need a screwdriver. So we'll put the screwdriver in the right hand. And there we have the auto lathe. The most useful piece of machinery there is in the game because with this you can build everything else. Now I know I'm going to want to break into the wiring over here, so I'll already put the uh, cable in my hand. Put a straight first. That's just my way of doing it. I don't bother connecting the data to it. Um, there are some occasions. Uh, this is to show you one thing that you can't do. Put the cable here. You cannot put the cable right next to it. You actually have to come out. So because I like things to look nice and neat. I'll start with a full one. One of the many requests of the devs is the ability to put down multiple, like a whole run of cable in one go. But uh, so far, hasn't happened. Now, because we're on the moon, there's no storm. Don't have to worry about things blowing away. So I'm just going to store things nice and neatly on the floor in a big pile. Same with the cable. Where now? Where is my lander? There it is. This is one of the reasons why you don't want to build too far from your base or too far from your your lander at the beginning because it is very easy to become disoriented and not figure out or not been able to find your way back. So I put the walls and the solid generator. I'm going to need some other things. Now from here, I want a battery. I also want the active vent. I want some pipe. This one here is the doors. I'm going to want that. And up there is a small starter uh, battery charger, which I want. Um, anything else I need? Sensors? No. This green one contains all, all your food. They start you with uh, a bunch of fertilized eggs. They only last a few days. Um, if you want some fun and games, you can try rearing chickens. It's <laughs> a bit of a giggle. And you know what? I'm, the only thing I'm going to get from here is going to be the beacon. Then I'll cover through, cover everything that the, uh, and where did I build my base? Oh, it's over here. Um, Going to cover everything in detail at later sessions. You can't obviously do the whole thing in one go. So I've got my uh, basic of that done. I also want to set up a quick survival room. So I'm going to do that just over here. It could be anywhere, but uh, actually, I can put down some of these things now. So, I want to put my little battery charger there, turn it on. And the solid generator, it's another piece of kit that you do not have to start from, uh, or you, when you place it, it's fully completed. So, right now, the power input, or sorry, the power output of the generator is pointing towards me. I want it pointing away from me. So, I should just turn it around like that, put it down here. This is where you dump the coal and this is where you turn it on. But I do need to wire it in here. So, oh, of course I'd throw my wiring away. So pick that up. And we'll just quickly get this wired in. Actually, what am I doing? I'm going the wrong way around. I 
Watch enough of this and you'll realise why I refer to myself as the complete idiot. And again, because I've got the wire cutters in my hands, I can splice into the, uh, uh, the existing wire networks quite easily. So you heard I got a power low warning, but I'm at 50%. You get a power low at 50%. But what I can do is swap this battery for this one, and then drag this one into here. Now, right now, the sun is so low on the horizon that when you look at the uh, solar power, you see it's actually not generating anything. But as it does, as it gets higher, it will start generating electricity, and that will start pl putting uh, juice into this battery here. Actually, before I do anything else, I should probably go and get some resources. We're going to need some iron, some gold, and some copper to get started. Now, I want to put this down. One way you can uh, place things is a thing called precision place. Press the T button with the item in your hand, and I can now say, okay, I want to put it exactly there, and there it is. The other way of doing it is you pick it up and drop it, and it can kind of go anywhere. That's good enough. So you start with a small battery in here, that will be good enough. Now, you may recall I, when I started uh, moving stuff around, I put the tracker tablet inside the uh, the tablet. So if I alt-click on that, it will show you that the tracker cartridge is in here. If you had a different one in your inventory, you could just drag and drop it in, make certain there's a battery on it, turn it on. So tracking beacon distance question mark, and it shows you distance to myself is zero, because I'm the only player here. Reason it's not tracking a tracking beacon is it's not turned on. So I turn it on, you get the yellow glow, now it shows you. So I'll turn it off to save the battery. I can close this off. I'll open up my mining tool belt. I'll take out the pickaxe, put it in my hand, and throw it as far away as I can, because I'm never going to use it. Here's my mining drill. Put that in this hand. And because the tablet is a tool, you can put that in your mining belt and leave it there. So, now I mentioned I ha do have a mod, so as I mine you will see 50 grams of uh, iron just magically appear. That's uh, it's called a 50 gram ore mod. Uh, a lot of people use them when streaming because it, may, it just cuts down on the amount of time I have to spend mining and digging things out. Right, we'll do a little coal. I want some gold and some copper. And there's some copper over here. The more you play, the more you'll, uh, the easier it'll be for you to recognize what ores are which. I shall get two of those. <laughs> and I shall get one of gold. Although for me, that's 50 which is unrealistically fast. You would not be able to mine this fast at the normal levels, obviously. Uh, this blue stuff here, this is oxide. This is basically frozen oxygen, but has a bit of nitrogen in it as well. Uh, this one is silicon, which looks an awful lot like water ice. This uh, pink stuff here, this is volatiles. This is like the game's way of saying, it. okay, it's nitrogen or methane or sorry not nitrogen hydrogen or methane or something that basically can be used to explode trying to see if i got any nearby water ice uh, right over here we have some nitrice this is frozen nitrogen or nitrous oxide uh, it can be very useful to make things explode and here we have cobalt. You're not going to need cobalt until uh, you know, mid to late game when you get into some advanced al alloys. No point in collecting it at this point. Uh, not seeing any water ice yet, but... Oh, maybe? No. Where's my base? Where's my base? Where's my base? 
very easy to happen. You only have to be 100 meters away for it to be completely out of render range, the way the game stands at the moment. So I think it's that way, but not certain. Hence, the tracker. Yes, I was right. So we're 138 meters away and you can't see it at all. It's not that the screen resolution isn't good enough, it's just the game cuts it out. Oh, let's uh, turn that tracker off. Uh, oh, here we are. Some more tries. So this down here is silicon, white. This is nitrice. It's got a little bit of green on it. And this stuff here is water ice. Can't really do anything with the water ice just now. Oh, and this stuff here is nickel. Again, only really useful uh, mid when you get into the mid-game stuff when you're doing advanced smelting and making uh, some of the alloys. So, where is my base? It's, there it is, 149. You know, let's just go up. I'll leave this on so you can see when the base base begins to come into view. Notice we're not flying very fast. Uh, this is the starting jetpack. It is not very good. You can build better ones that will fly faster. Uh, they do, you know, the good ones require some more. Um, oh, there we go. The lander just popped in. Um, it do require some advanced alloys that you have to use or have to create using the uh, the furnace or the advanced furnace. But that's not for today. Today we are just doing the very, very basics. Okay, so we'll turn... Oh, you know what, let's put that in there. Put this in there. Turn that off. Save a bit of battery. And you see our battery is now fully charged. Blue in this game is fully charged. So. I'll start by smelting some iron. I'll just drag and drop, put it in here. And you have to make certain that this is turned on. Right now, this one I'm looking at is actually turned on. This one is off. So, turn it on, start smelting, and we're in business. Now, whilst that's cooking, I'll get ready or get started creating the uh, little survival room. So, I'm going to want some iron cheats. And I'm just going to create a little one by one. And I'll do it just here. So that gives me a an airtight floor. Make sure the world is turned off, put it away again. Now I'll get my walls. Right click. Now when you place uh, iron walls, or indeed any walls, you have a number of variants of them. Control the variant by just using the scroll wheel. Uh, the iron wall starts with a window. I don't want windows at this point, really. Well, it doesn't make much difference. So I'm just going to go with basic walls. So one, press the C key. Two, C key again. And now I want the ceiling. So you can keep pressing the C until it switches up there. Or you can use the uh, navigation keys or the rotation keys, insert, delete, home end, page up and page down, and it will do it for you. So you don't need a tool in your hand in order to uh, finish building these walls. You just need an iron sheet in your hand. And the different types of iron sheet, the only difference is the, the pattern of the uh, bits of iron there. Now I do want the doors, and I still Hydration have those on critical. me. See, now I'm getting a hydration critical. So, good timing. So, I'm there are multiple types of doors. I'm not going to bother with any of the uh, regular ones. I'm just going to go with a manual hatch because it's quickest and easiest. Does not require power. Put it in there. Don't need the other one. Now, to finish it, uh, let's, see, let's just put the wire cutters in my hand point at it, it tells me I need a, wine, a welding torch and one iron sheet. So, we'll grab the welder, grab the iron sheet, switch to the welder, turn the welder on, weld it up, job done. And there we have it. Now, in order to create it, 
Now I've got the, the basic of the, uh, the room set up. I'm going to need a way of controlling the atmosphere inside it. So this is where the active vent comes in. So I should put the active vent in down here. I'll put it with the, the big plus at the top because that's where the pipe goes and the little one at the bottom that's where the power goes. I'll just place it like that. I'll grab some pipe, C to rotate it. You could also place it from the other side of the wall as well if you wanted to. Um, but for simplicity I'll just put it up like that. And just so we can see it. Now, if I wanted to create more storage, I could put more pipes in there. Then use the, the wrench or the spanner. Oops, let's uh, rotate this. So now I have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's about ten. No, actually, there's more than that. There's, I think, fourteen pipe segments I've used. That should be more than enough. Put that down. Now I'll go back to my lander. Now I'm going to want to take the big oxygen tank out. Now the way you do this, you can unmount a crate or this with the wrench. So just point at it, click it, it falls down. Then with your free hand, you have to switch to your empty hand. You point at one of those little black things, that's the handle. It'll pick it up and it will kind of spin around in your hand and not show you where you're going. You will get used to it eventually. Okay, so I'm going to want to put this in here, preferably turning it around a little. Now I got lucky there. Now I'm going to need to wire in the active vent. So I need power for it. Uh, just for funsies, we'll connect it to the other one. Now I can work from the outside here if I wish. One of the advantages of the uh, of the manual door is it allows you to pass wires and cables just about anywhere through it. It kind of ignores the physics. So all is good there. The only issue is we have no power for it. So I know there are another couple of batteries in the lander. And my sense of direction is failing me again. Now we go back to the lander, we'll go around this side this way. And here we have two more batteries. So I shall grab both of those. There is another one as well in one of the tools. These things here are uh, for when we get going with the hydroponics. Not going to worry too much about that. Uh, the paint cans and the labeler, this is the other tool that has uh, a battery in it. Not going to worry too much at this stage. But I am going to want some water and some food because I need to eat and drink. And whilst we're doing this, I can actually throw some copper in here as well. That's good. So I should put one battery in here. I've still got 65% in my soup battery, so I'm good for quite a while. And I'll put a spare one in there. Okay, so now I have everything I need. I've got my food, got my water, got my air supply in here. This seems to be working. Let's test it. No, it's not. Because I didn't turn it on. Now it shows working. Okay, so we'll close this off. We're still in a vacuum. Now the, of course, I, the way I've placed the tank is ideal for when you're when you want to use it, but bad for instruction. This knob at the back has two sides. Uh, you can increase here or decrease on this side. So I want to increase. So 
I'm, each time I click it, it's going to change the output by 10 uh, kilopascals. I'm going to set it to 30. And you'll see down here on the right hand side, or the bottom right, on the external, it's now showing the external uh, pressure is going up. And the temperature is also going up because the oxygen is at a nice friendly temperature. That means I can open my suit or open my helmet. Let's get this up here. I will unlock the helmet, open it, and I'm not dying. I have a small survival hut. This is literally all you need to get going. Now, once you've got the pressure up to 30 D, go back over to this side and shut it back down to zero. This is like a pressure regulator. It will fill it just to 30 kilopascals and then stop. That's important because this is the device where we're going to fill up our oxygen container when it gets low. So I want to have something to eat. So I'll put something in my hand, right click it, consume, put it nice and neatly on the floor. Same with the water. There we go. So you'll show shows here that um, you know there's I'm only at 99% health. In a moment that will dissipate disappear, and the, now the thirst and food have been completely satisfied. There we go. All right, so we will then close the helmet and lock it. Whilst we're here, we can also take our oxygen canister very quickly put it into the the manual hatch that fills it up put it back and now we've got much more oxygen you know you may have noticed that the internal pressure dropped a little every time you do this the pressure in here drops and you get less and less air now reason why we put all these pipes up here like this is we want to save the oxygen so um, remember what I said before about the uh, the buttons being backwards. You click this, it will set it to inward, which is what we want. In means it's going to suck it into the vent and we will turn it on. And as I do so, keep an eye on the external pressure. You'll see that will go down. What it's doing is it's taking all of the oxygen that we put into this room and it's put it into these pipes. Probably didn't need this many. Uh, but anyway, now it's a vacuum. We can go back outside. The advantage of doing it this way is we now can come back in here, close the door, reverse the direction, setting it to outward, turn it on, and it puts all the air from the pipes back into the room and we can eat and drink again. Obviously I don't need to just now, so put it all back out, shut that off, and we're good. Because if we had not turned down this valve to zero, this tank would now be trying to fill the vacuum of the moon with 30 kilopascals of oxygen and you would not survive very long thereafter. Okay, so that's the basics of getting going. We haven't actually built anything yet. Our furnace has uh, very kindly given us some starting copper and uh, iron. I'm going to also put in uh, a little um, gold. Gold takes a long time to smelt. I don't want to do the whole thing, so you'll notice on these uh, ores you have this little thing here. Ore is something that you can break up manually. So you just uh, alt click on it and say split one a couple of times and it puts, in this case, two uh, gold in my right hand. Put that in there, click go, and that's going to smelt that. The reason I only did two gold is I know that's all I need to build the next thing I want to build which will be the electronics printer. But that will be for next time. Hope you enjoyed this. Any comments or questions, leave a note below and I will get back to you as quick as I can. Or maybe someone else who knows more about it will. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later.